Can you imagine a world where there's no butter? According to doctors and nutritionists, breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and there are only a few breakfast meals that don't include butter in any form. You can eat butter with croissants, baked potatoes, steak, and a bunch of other food combinations. That's if you've grown bored of simply eating it with bread. Besides breakfast, butter is also used to manufacture many products, especially baked foods. However, for something with great importance, not everyone is familiar with its production process. We go behind the scenes to see how butter is made, as well as an insight into the special steps involved in converting milk to butter. Butter is one of the most popularly used foods worldwide, with different varieties to meet the needs of different classes of people, such as vegans, kids, and people with specific health concerns. Normally, butter is a dairy product gotten from the protein and fat components of milk extracted from special farm animals. Primarily, cow milk is used, but in some cases, milk from goats, sheep, buffalo, and yaks can also be used. After a carefully planned process, this milk is turned into a substance that is incredibly useful in any state. In solid form, butter is used as a spread, but it can also be melted and used as a condiment for baking, frying, and other cooking processes. We have established that milk is the main ingredient in butter production, but one other ingredient is also used, which is salt. Salt can be added for taste and preservation. However, modern manufacturers now use it for just taste since butter is generally kept in a refrigerated environment. Large-scale butter production takes place in huge dairies equipped with high-tech machineries and competent staff members. However, you don't need to have all of that to produce butter for yourself and your family. And by the end of this video, you'll see just what I mean. The first step in butter production is acquiring milk. Usually, Major butter manufacturers have their own livestock farms, where they rear the cow from which the milk is gotten, or any other animal of choice. The farmers milk the cows, and the raw milk is stored in large cooling tanks serving two functions. First, since the milk is usually warm when we get it from the animal, the cooling tanks help reduce their temperature to normal. And the second function of these tanks is to store the milk until it is ready to be transported to the dairies. The milk is collected by a large truck sent from the dairy to the farm at regular intervals, about twice a week or once every two to three days, mostly depending on the company and their production rate. At the dairy, the milk samples are first sent to the laboratory, and skilled technicians check the quality of the milk. These samples are tested based on texture, color, and other microscopic tests are carried out as well and any sample that falls short of the company's standards is separated from the good ones and discarded. After selecting the good milk, it's taken to the next stage of production where the fat and non-fat content of the milk are separated. For this separation to happen, samples are placed in a centrifuge, which rotates at an incredibly high speed and temperature of about 60 degrees Celsius. Due to the high rotation speed, a special kind of force causes the fats to clump together and settle at the top center of the mixture. The non-fat component is called skimmed milk, while the fatty portion is known as cream. Since the cream is the component that butter is produced from, it is extracted and taken to the next production phase, while the skimmed milk is sent off to other parts of the dairy, where it is used to produce other milk products, for example, powdered milk, buttermilk, etc. After the cream has been extracted from the centrifuge, it's taken to the next production stage, which is pasteurizing. It's at this stage that the cream is sterilized. It involves using heat to completely kill all the bacteria and other microbes inside the milk after its extraction from the farm animal. For this sterilization to take place, the cream is heated in a pasteurizer for about 25 seconds, between 70 and 90 degrees Celsius, and when that's done, it's left to cool down again. The pasteurized cream is kept in a huge steel container where it is sealed and stored for about 24 hours. During this time, the cream matures and its inbuilt flavors are enhanced through a spontaneous process called physical maturation. This allows the cream to thicken, get some flavor, and increase acidity. Adding lactic ferments speeds up the acidification process 
and a classic example is yogurt. Although the cream's acidification is influenced by adding some external ingredients, the cream thickens on its own. And this is because the fats inside begin to clump together as the cooling process continues. Once the maturation step is over, it is now time for the cream to be churned using a large butter churner. This machine consists of large blades, which beat the cream and push it around in a very rough way until there's an obvious separation of yellow grains and watery solution. This watery solution is called buttermilk, which is a popular dairy product as well. It can either come from the churning of milk or the fermentation of skimmed milk from the centrifugation process we talked about earlier. However, the product of interest in butter manufacturing is the yellow grains that stand out from the buttermilk. Next, the yellow grains are taken out of the mixture and cleaned. They are thoroughly washed in clean water, and sometimes they are washed directly into the buttermilk mixture. Once the grains have been thoroughly cleaned, they are blended to produce a smooth homogeneous paste, which forms the butter. For salted butter, salt is added as the yellow grains are being blended. Despite the smoothness of the paste, it is still needed using wooden boards to compress the butter and thicken the mixture, thus forming a more solid mass. Another purpose of this kneading is to break away whatever tiny droplets of buttermilk remain in the butter grains. However, despite the rather intense kneading and extraction of the buttermilk, butter still has a 15% water-based component, while about 80% is purely fat from the milk. Once all the mixing and kneading is over, the butter is fed into a special machine called a molder, where the shape of the butter is formed. These molders come in different shapes and sizes, and depending on which one the butter is put in, the butter can come out as rolls or blocks. Afterwards, they are checked by skilled technicians who discard anyone that looks, tastes, or feels abnormal. The ones that meet the company's standards are transported to the next production area, where packaging takes place. To minimize oxidation and preserve the flavor of the butter, they are packed using a special paper which is mostly resistant to air. However, some companies package their butter in plastic cups, which are sealed off with thick aluminum foil papers. All these are done to protect the quality of the butter, and for a final touch, the packed butter is refrigerated for a while before being boxed and sent off to retail stores where they are purchased. Unlike many food snacks, butter is one of the oldest processed food products known to man, so it's not trademarked by any company. The invention of butter has been traced back to Africa around the year 8000 BC, which is an extremely long time ago. But now, thousands of years later, butter is produced using machines and more sophisticated procedures. However, just like it was in 8000 BC, butter can be made from the comfort of your home. And with the help of modern equipment, the process is significantly easier, faster, and healthier than what the inventors of the food had to go through. What do you like to eat butter with? Leave your answer in the comments section below.